Before the video begins, we'd like to give a huge thank you and congratulations to Neoscribe, who recently shouted us out in his first video after passing 100,000 subscribers. If you want to check him out for more awesome videos on space, science and technology, we've left a link to his channel in the description. The year is 3944. You and your crewmate Arya are about to embark on a mission to the galaxy's core. Humanity is on the precipice of becoming a Type 3 civilization, and as renowned physicists, you've both been trusted with studying the galactic nucleus, a supermassive black hole aptly named LRG50E3, and recording valuable information. This information will help engineers located on planet EM0311 to devise a method that will allow humanity to harvest the energy of this entire galaxy. Your crewmate Arya performs some final calibration on the Alcubi air drive before reaching up to the keyboard above and entering the celestial coordinates of the black hole into the ship's navigation computer. After a moment of carefully entering numerals, she submits the information. The sound of metal clanking and churning resonates up through the floor as the ship prepares itself for an adventure. A robotic AI voice booms out from the computer's main speakers. Destination, LRG 50E3. Distance, 30,028 light years. Potential hazards, zero. Estimated time. Three minutes. Three minutes is just enough time for a coffee. You both lean back in your chairs and slurp from your drink pouches. The light from a billion stars flashes before your very eyes as you hurtle through the universe at unimaginable speed. You sit for a couple of minutes, closely monitoring the array of instruments arranged on the dashboard in front of you. Arya spends this time in the cargo bay gathering the necessary instruments and experiments for proper examination of the stellar entity ahead. After checking all ship functions are nominal for the upcoming spacewalk, you take a moment to admire the beauty of the universe before you. Of all the 1.1 trillion humans inhabiting 14% of the galaxy, it's likely none of them will see what you and Arya are about to see. Black holes, while they're understood on a mathematic and scientific level, hold so much mystery beyond the event horizon. The boundary at which the speed required to escape the black hole is equal to that of light. Go closer than the event horizon and there really will be no escape. You ponder the possibilities as to what really resides within the black of the void. Suddenly, LRG-53 appears from nowhere, engulfing your field of view as the stars backdropping it slow down and stop. You've arrived. You think to yourself that that part of warp speed always catches you off guard, the sudden stop at the end. Your crewmate emerges from the cargo bay behind you holding two cube-shaped bags the size of shipping crates as light as a feather in the 10% gravity environment that the ship is able to emulate. She floats one of the bags on a wide arc in your direction. The sight of a 40 kilogram bag stuffed with heavy scientific equipment, gracefully floating through the air as if it were nothing, is a sight to behold. You both pressurize your spacesuits and disable the artificial gravity system before making your way to the airlock. You weightlessly grab hold of a side railing and log into the ship's computer once more, making sure to set the pressure variables to the right setting. You hit engage. Air from the ship hurtles past your visor and the sheer pressure almost pushes you back towards the door you came in. After the air thins, you push the hatch release valve and suddenly everything on the outside goes silent. The remaining particles in the airlock have been sucked into the wide, black abyss. You're about 800,000 kilometers from the event horizon. Even though that seems like an awful lot, it's really nothing compared to the size of this gargantuan structure. When looking directly at it, inky blackness almost completely engulfs your field of view. When looking back, 
space seems ever so slightly distorted, as if you're looking at it through a fisheye lens. When forward again, you see the photon sphere, an area in every black hole's composition where the gravitational forces are at such an extremity that light is forced to orbit it. You can see the other side of the black hole. With your bags of equipment strapped to your suits, you propel yourselves forward towards the pre-planned equipment site using your suit's inbuilt manned maneuvering thrusters. As you're setting up equipment, you feel a thud in the back of the suit. Before you know it, your propellant tank is busted open and you're accelerating right towards the face of the black hole. You flail your arms and legs about an attempt to regain stability of your body flight. These attempts are helpless, as there is little to no particles in space to push your body against. Arya realizes and calls over to you using the suit communication system. She informs you that you've been hit by a piece of rogue debris and that she's contacted the rescue crew in the nearby star system Venta Centauri F to arrange for your immediate rescue. She knows it's too late, and so do you. By this point, you're nearing light speed as you approach the event horizon. Arya remains in constant contact with you, her words becoming more distorted and mumbled as you approach the void. Suddenly, all communication cuts out. All you can hear is your own breath. You've passed the event horizon. You cry out to Arya, your crewmate to the world, begging for rescue from the abyss. These efforts are pointless. The concept of isolation crosses your mind. There is no way you're getting out of here. You are one with the black hole. You cannot, you physically cannot escape. There is no way to leave. There is no speed you can travel that will get you out of here. Every effort you make is pointless. Every move you make will be destroyed. This is the end. Then you relax. There is no way you're getting out of here. You are now one with the black hole, and the black hole is one with you. Every effort you make is pointless. This is the end. This is where you return to the universe. You try not to think too hard and just enjoy the ride. After all, there is no point to anything anymore. There's an element of satisfaction and conclusion to this. You have time to reflect on your choices, the path you took, the friends you made, the places you went. You think about how a black hole is essentially the credit screen to life. In a black hole, space and time effectively swap places. Beyond the event horizon, moving in any direction other than straight towards the centre is simply not an option. While looking forward, you see everything that has ever fallen into the black hole before you, and when looking behind, over your shoulder, you see everything that will ever fall into the black hole. This is because, as you fall deeper and deeper into the hole, the outside universe itself becomes more and more curved, until the cosmos from your view morphs into a complete circle. The light from over 100 billion galaxies all across the universe is portrayed as if you're looking at it through a porthole. You see everything. At the center of every black hole lies the singularity, where the mass of a million stars is compressed into an infinitely small space. Space-time becomes so warped at this point that it loops in on itself, becoming infinitely curved in the process. At this point, the laws of physics as we know them no longer apply. Your mind switches from relaxation to dread. You clock the ever-approaching fate that you've been condemned to. As you start to approach the singularity, the gravitational difference between your feet and your head begins to become apparent. Your body begins to stretch apart, as if you're lying on a medieval rack. This is where things start to hurt. You are now being what scientists call spaghettified. All seven octillion atoms that once formed your body are now spiraling into the singularity as individuals. You end your existence as particle soup. Everything that characterizes you is gone, torn apart by the immense gravitational pressure. Your existence is sucked away in a matter of minutes. Your journey into LRG53 has come to an end.
In the months following your death, two more physicists embark on staggered missions to complete the work you and Arya started. The measurement result was exactly what the engineers back on planet EM0311 were looking for. They begin work on a device which allows humanity to harvest power directly from the black hole's photon sphere, laying down the foundations for humanity's leap into becoming a Type 3 civilization. Exactly a year after your disappearance, a construction crew is sent to raise a testament to you, commending your heroic sacrifice in the name of progress. A huge space station orbiting LRG 50E3 is constructed in your name, jam-packed full of scientists at all times, constantly studying the inner properties of the black hole and what exists beyond the event horizon. While you now only exist as a cloud of atoms, compressed into the singularity, or perhaps spat out in part of the universe, the legacy you leave in your wake is an honourable one. Humanity continues on its quest for knowledge, as it always has, and as it always will. Hey guys, thanks very much for watching this. This short story was a little bit different to what we usually do, but I hope you enjoyed it. Once again, a massive congratulations and thank you to Neoscribe for passing the 100k mark and for shouting us out so kindly. If you liked the video, please like it if you feel so inclined, and stick around because we're going to be making some more videos like this one.